Hello, this is Aggie from Code2. In this video, I'm going to show you how to migrate all mailbox contents, email, contacts, public folders, and so on, from Exchange 2007 directly to Exchange 2019, without doing a double hop migration. To accomplish this task, I'm going to use Code2 Exchange Migration, a paid product from Code2. Note that this product supports a wide range of migration scenarios, including Exchange 2003 upgrades, email moves from IMAP servers, and Office 365 offboarding to any Exchange server version from 2010 to 2019. So you can treat this video as a general guide to migrations using Code2 Exchange Migration. For details on supported migration scenarios, see the link in the description of this video. In this case, because coexistence between Exchange 2007 or 2010 and Exchange 2019 is not supported, I am going to perform a cross-forest migration. OK, I already have Code2 Exchange Migration installed on the Windows desktop, which is connected to the Source Exchange 2007 domain. The target organization is also prepared for the migration, as per instructions linked in the description of this video. So, let's get started. This is what the program's primary screen looks like. Right now, all the tiles are empty, because I haven't configured anything or performed any migrations yet. These two tiles are going to display reports on how my migrations are going. By clicking the gear icon, I can access the notification options. Now I can define what type of information I want to view in the tiles and elsewhere, and which notifications should be sent directly to my email address. Now an easy way to start creating a new migration job is simply by clicking this link here. I get a choice of source server type. In this case, I'm migrating from Exchange. And now I can start creating my migration job. So I am going to type in the name of the job. Next, select which source server mailboxes are going to be migrated. But first, I have to configure a connection to the source server. To do this, I'm going to click the Source Server drop-down menu and select Add New Source Connection. In the Source Server Connection wizard, I first have to choose what protocol to use. The EWS protocol is supported starting from Exchange 2010 Service Pack 1. Since I am planning to migrate Exchange 2007, I have to choose the MAPI protocol. The account I use must meet several requirements, which are all explained in the article linked in the description of this video. Now I have to decide whether the source exchange server should be discovered automatically or selected manually, type in my password, and configure. Looks like everything went well. If there had been any problems, I would have been able to get troubleshooting suggestions by clicking the links next to the steps. Click Finish. Now back to configuring the scope of source mailboxes. By default, all users' mailboxes and public folders are selected, but I can change this by removing items from the list, adding specific users, AD groups, using the email address filters and so on. Additionally, I can use the exceptions list to exclude selected mailboxes from the migration. Now I'm going to configure the connection to the target server. I don't have any connections configured yet, so I'm going to add a new one. This time, the connection is going to be achieved via Exchange Web Services, EWS. So the account I use again needs to meet a specific set of requirements. The article linked in the description of this video has all the details. I'm going to type in my credentials and click Configure. Just like earlier, in case of failures, the program provides links to the troubleshooting suggestions. The next step is optional, but it can potentially save you a lot of work especially if you are migrating a large organization. It lets me easily match source and target mailboxes based on a range of matching patterns. The coolest part is that, if the target mailbox does not exist yet, I can configure the application to create it before the migration starts. I'm going to highlight all mailboxes and click Auto-Match. The default auto-matching pattern is the obvious one, match usernames or display names. There are several other predefined patterns available, but I can also create a custom one. For example, I could add a matching pattern based on the source email address, in which case I can also define the format of the email address and target first name and last name. Or if I prepared a CSV file with matched mailboxes, I could upload it into the program. The last two settings are 
whether mailboxes that are already matched should be processed again, and what the application should do if target counterparts of selected mailboxes do not exist. This is what its settings look like. In this window, I can modify the primary properties of the mailboxes that are going to be created, provide a temporary password, as well as define the scope of Active Directory attribute that is going to be copied. OK and AutoMatch. After the AutoMatch process completes, the target mailboxes are listed next to the source ones. A detailed report on the results of matching of mailboxes is also generated and can be viewed here. If any of the mailboxes haven't been matched, I can correct this manually by clicking this arrow and choosing a desired action. I can also modify the successful matches using the same method. The column on the right contains information about actions that are going to be performed. They can also be easily modified manually. One more thing to note is that mailboxes that haven't been matched in this step can also be matched manually later on. Now I can click Save and resume configuring the migration job. Next, I have the scheduler feature. When enabled, it allows for setting recurring or one-time periods when the program is going to be active. The time filter is also useful when performing a migration consisting of a number of incremental synchronizations spread out over a period of time. For instance, I could start by migrating recent items so that people can start working in the new environment as soon as possible. Then I could migrate the old items and complete the migration in the background. By default, the cutoff date does not apply to contacts, but this can be changed by unchecking the override option. Just like the time filter, the folder filter feature allows me to limit the scope of migrated items to certain types and decide whether special folders should be included in the migration. Lastly, the advanced settings tab lets me decide how many mailboxes will be migrated at the same time and set a maximum size limit for migrated messages. In the case of the former, it's recommended to use a number that's equal to the number of CPU cores your machine is equipped with. Looks like the settings are correct, which means that the migration job is ready. Clicking Finish switches me over to the Jobs tab, where I can already see the new job on the list. This is where I can verify the configuration one more time and manually match any remaining mailboxes. To do this, I just have to right-click on the row with the mailbox, click Match Target Mailbox and select a mailbox from the list or type in the target's email address. And that's all. I'm ready to start the migration now. Now, because I haven't enabled the scheduler to start the job automatically, I have to start it manually. The speed of the migration depends on several factors, the main one being the amount of data you want to copy. Then there's your network bandwidth, source and target server throttling and so on. You can get an idea of what the speed of your migration will be like by testing a move of an average mailbox. Later on, you will be able to resync the mailbox without having to purchase an additional license. By the way, the application lets me pause the job and start it again at any point without risking errors or duplications. During the replication process, the application displays some basic info about the migration up here and a more detailed report down here. If I want to get further details, I can use the Reports section in the menu bar. For instance, by highlighting a particular mailbox and clicking the Mailbox Report button, I get a very precise info on how the migration went or is going right now. And as you can see, I can verify the migration folder by folder. And if any of the items had been excluded or had failed, the reason would be provided over here. And that's all there is to it. I hope Code to Exchange migration will help you perform a successful Exchange Server upgrade. Thank you for watching.